Growing your own food is hard work and a lot of patience. But imagine, you put in months and months of labour, but by the end of the year, your plants still haven't given you any food and all of that effort was wasted. Have you experienced this problem? This year I did things slightly differently and ended up with a bunch of plants that went to seed or didn't fruit at all. So in this video I'm going to show you what I did wrong in the garden this year and what you can do to avoid making the same mistakes next year. The first mistake I made happened about this time last year. It carried through to the start of the growing season and had a knock-on effect on the rest of the year. During those dark winter months, when the garden has died back and we're sitting down and thinking about next year's garden, it's important to really plan out the season ahead. This year, I didn't plan out my garden and work out which plants would go where or how many plants I'd need. Instead, I went online, bought a ton of seeds that I wanted to try out and simply hoped for the best. This was great right up until late winter when I had to sow all of the seeds and in early spring when I had to harden off all of the seedlings by taking them outside in the morning and bringing them back in again at night. And then it came back to bite me again in May when I had to plant them all out in a rush to stop them going leggy or drying out in their pots. In fact, by the time I did plant them out, a lot of my plants had become root bound and any growth afterwards was probably quite stunted. I also really didn't have the time to do any serious weeding, so this no dig bed I started that got dug up by the cat is now just a bed of stinging nettles and dockweed. Similarly, I didn't get to prune my tomato plants or finish netting my brassicas or plant out a load of ornamental plants like these Mexican sunflowers, these dahlias or whatever these are meant to be. So one thing I really recommend you do is decide how much time you have to sow seeds plant out, prune and care for your garden so you avoid wasting time, effort and food. So plan out your garden, use that to calculate how many plants you're going to need and then work back from that to figure out how many seeds you should be sowing. While I didn't create a plan for the garden, I did have a rough idea of where some things should go. However, this created the second problem. When I first moved into the house, I used satellite data and video footage taken at the viewing to create a 3D model and to try and project where the sun would shine to figure out where I should place my beds so that I would optimize for maximum growth. This year, I didn't do any of that, nor did I consider the fact that the trees next to my house are young and therefore relatively fast growing. And to my surprise, at midday at the start of November, the sun doesn't shine on my garden. In fact, the only real consideration was that I wanted to make sure that my tomatoes weren't grown in the same bed as they were last year. The sunniest bed was filled with leeks, onion and garlic, which I thought would make building the supports and planting very difficult. Which only left this bed here, the most shaded bed in the garden. Removing access to full sun had a direct impact on the growth of my tomato plants. It made them grow a lot slower and fruit a lot later than the year before, and they stopped fruiting a lot earlier. And it invited other problems too, like diseases. Plants have growing preferences. If you site them in the right location, they'll perform a lot better. This is pretty basic stuff, and I ignored it. So don't make the same mistake I did and plant them in the sunniest position you can. On the other end of the spectrum are salad leaves, which tend to go to seed and become bitter if they are exposed to too much heat. So placing them in dappled shade or full shade during the summer months is a good idea. Meanwhile, cauliflower and broccoli do well in cooler conditions, which helps prevent bolting and they can be grown in partial shade. So when planning out your garden, really consider how much light your plants are going to need. The next mistake I made was even more basic and embarrassing, especially after making this video here about how to install soaker hoses in your garden and how to automate your watering. But I'm sure it's a mistake that we've all made at one point or another. Last year, after making my no-dig beds, I installed soaker hoses under the two smallest ones, which would do all of the watering for my tomatoes and peppers. But I didn't do anything at all to the beds on the other side of the garden. This year I installed a soaker hose all the way along this top bed after digging up my onions and garlic. 
winding it around so that any plants would roughly be no more than a metre away from the hose. But it also never got connected because I didn't get a chance to put the rest of the line in. I had already planted a lot of plants in this middle bed by the time I bought the necessary adapters and digging a trench around the plants would have been challenging in this heavy and stony patch in the garden. And again, time was limited, so this bed never got a soaker hose. So my tomatoes and peppers this year never had any direct watering and just relied on the rain and whatever was stored in the clay and the slowly decomposing bedding that I used in the chicken run in the winter. I also moved my sprinkler to water the strawberries that I was growing in pots and never got around to reorganising my garden or buying a second sprinkler. So these grow bags where I'm growing my aubergines and my potatoes never received any water at all. Luckily it was a very wet year in what is normally the driest part of England so the tomatoes did okay. However the aubergines failed to set fruit and the potatoes didn't make it. So if you're trying to grow your own food, especially if you're doing it in containers, then be sure to remember to actually water your plants. Or at the start of the season, before you've planted anything delicate, to finish setting up an automatic watering system. If you were to walk around my garden, one of the first things that you'd notice is that there isn't going to be much growing here through the winter. And as the frosts start to become deeper and more frequent, the garden will begin to look emptier and emptier. For a while now it's been unclear exactly how long I'm going to be in this garden and unfortunately that's still not been decided. So as well as being pushed for time I've also been unsure about how much of that I really want to invest in someone else's garden. As a result I ended up doing very little winter planning. I didn't sow many backup plants to replace those that have bolted and I hesitated and delayed planting out my winter bulbs. However, it probably looks like I'll be here for at least another couple of months, which means if I don't get planting soon, then January will look pretty bleak around here. So one thing I'd encourage you all to do is to plan out your winter garden at the same time as the summer garden. If you've left it as late as I have, and you're watching this in November, or maybe even in early December, then there's still time to get the winter bulbs in, to sow seeds like broad beans, in some places known as fava beans, and to grow foods like onion and garlic from sets. And perhaps the most significant mistake I made this year was that I didn't spend much time outside enjoying the garden. I grew enormous sunflowers, had great success with the new tomato supports. I tried out a lot of new plants, including growing my first globe artichoke, and I even hatched and raised more chickens. But I really didn't see much of it at all. There were lots of reasons why I didn't get to go outside and enjoy the garden. And I even went out of my way to make a video about being trapped at your desk and what you can do to try and minimise the issue. You can watch that video here and a little bit of news, it very recently won Garden Video of the Year. So I'm pretty sure you'll enjoy it. Otherwise, as always, happy gardening. <laughs>